so demanding. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video on our Mark IV Golf. It's 2002 PD-130. What else can I say? This is the daily. Obviously, it's a wagon or a state, depending where you're coming from. So, yes, today, front brakes. Now, I wasn't going to do a video on this because I thought it's just brake pads, which we have here from Euro Car Parts. Uh, they're Brembo's, I can't remember how much they cost. But hey, I like going for a good name, it's brakes anyway. And this is the car I drive every day and I want to arrive and I want to stop, which is good. Anyway, like I was saying, I wasn't going to do a video, but some of you guys on Instagram, when I put post pictures, say, well, why didn't you do a video on that? And I thought, well, it's just brake pads, but, like they said, if it helps one person do their own brake pads, why not? So, here we go. Hopefully, this will be a nice quick video on doing the front brake pads on a Mark IV Golf. I mean, I would imagine they're all very similar. Um, brake pad wise, uh, one of them has got a wear indicator, which is basically a wire buried inside of this, which when you touch it with a disc, when it's worn out, because it's set right at the back. Sorry, it's a bit dark. Um, it will earth out and bring a light up on the dash like I showed previously. So anyway, first things first, don't forget to take your, uh, your wheel lock key or wheel bolt lock key thing from the boot before you park it up against a wall because then you've got to move it again. Anyway, we're going to get the wheels off uh, obviously get it in the air first, we'll put it on axle stands and let's have a go. I'm going to practice on the other side like I always do and then show you this side. If I remember rightly the the sensor you know with the wire is on this side on the left hand side of the car looking out. So anyway let's I've waffled on enough two and a half minutes blimey too much chatter uh, let's get it up in the air and get them wheels off and then have a look. There we go, we're off. And the pads actually don't look too bad, really. When you look at that, there's plenty of meat on there if you compare it to my finger. And on the back side, where the actual sensor is, you see there's quite a bit there, but I don't know if you can see down where the sensor is. The wire is actually touching the disc. So I was thinking of not doing it, but I mean, the discs are getting just a little bit worn. So what I might do is just do a set of pads, since I've got them, and it'll make the light go out as well. And next time we'll be changing the discs as well. That's what I think anyway. I've set you up as best I can. Obviously it's a bit awkward underneath here, but hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing there. Excuse me, first thing I've got to do is get this clip off. Now, Normally, you can just pop it out like that. You can see it's just a pin in a hole. I don't know if you can see that very well. But yeah, it just goes in those two holes there. Then we're going to turn this around. Oh. And then remove the plug. Now these can be a pain, you've got to press it together, squeeze the lug and then it'll pop out. So you got, it's a bit awkward, but it's doable. There we go, that one. So that's off. And then you can pop these little rubber caps off the back. They're not always on there, but there's two. One at the top and one at the bottom. Sorry, I'm trying to, on, let's move that light a bit. Is that better, that light? So the next thing we've got to do is we've got to squish the caliper together to be able to get it off. So we use a big screwdriver in here and just start it off. 
You see the caliper going in there? See it going in there? Something to be said, but before you do this, make sure you've got plenty of room in your uh, master cylinder fluid reservoir, because if you squish it all back, it might squish up out of it, if you've not got enough room. All right, next up, Allen keys. Seven mil, I think seven mil. I can't even read it. Yep, seven mil in here, and we take these two pins out. So I've got a sort of ratchet set, but you can do it with Allen keys, just takes a bit longer, that's all. There's one top and one bottom. And hopefully we can get them out because we can give these a bit of a clean. It's always a good idea to give these a clean. Um, oh, these aren't too bad, but we'll give them a clean anyway. And the bottom one the same. That's loose. Get that pin out. And then as long as we've got enough slack on the caliper, it should come off. And there's, you see that's where the wire is. I'll show you that in a minute. But sit this on top of there. Try not to kink that actually. Let's do it that way. That's safe there. And we can pull off front pad just comes out like that. That's it. And the back pad sprung in there. Did you see that? Let's move you up a bit. So yeah, there's springs holding it in into, into the caliper. And that is the piston that moves in and out. So now we need to push this piston back further so we can get the new pads in because obviously they take more room. Now I have got a, a rewind kit, you know, a caliper rewind kit, which, I mean, if you're gonna do a few brake jobs, you can pick them up pretty cheap. They're, they're not expensive. But if you haven't got one, you can use a G clamp there, or sometimes if you've got some big grips, you can, uh, you can do with that. But this just makes it easier, and you can use them when you're rewinding the back ones when they need to be rotated as well as compressed. So just gonna wind that back in, nice and easy. And now we need to put the new pad in. Make sure there's nothing amiss there. We wanna check for moisture. This can be a bit fiddly. Basically you just gotta squish it back in and compress those little springs so you get a screwdriver in there give it a little shove see what I mean can be a bit fiddly that one's in there that's good let's keep that wire out of the way and the other one the new front one goes in here like that but these Brembo ones I've got a little sticky pad on here I, I'm guessing it's anti squeal pad, so I need to whip that off. And then that just slips in there. Sometimes you can put a tiny bit of grease on these. Pens, if you feel like it, that's fair enough, go for it. If not, don't worry. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, put it, put the pad in the right way around. Right, so now we can just slip this back on, keeping that out of the way and that in the right place. Now, I said about cleaning these, I've got a little, my little Makita, which makes cleaning these really quite easy. So you just stick your pin in the end and get a bit of emery. Like that, and just spin it up. Put 
cleans them up nice and easy. Do the second one. That one's good enough. And then I always like to put a little bit of just a little bit of grease on them. Not so much for lubrication because they're in rubber, but more just to stop them rusting really. And then get our allen key. We have to line up the holes. That's that one started. And then we'll put a little bit of grease on the bottom one. Don't need much. Just probably, this is probably far too much actually. But. And then you will have to compress this in a little bit to get it lined up. And then wind that one in. And then let's do these up. Don't have to be red, really, really tight, but just adequate. You'll feel it when you take it off. Click, click. These aren't very, they're not a big thread. I think it's only M8, so don't need a lot. Click, click. And then, excuse me, you have to try and get this thing on. So we want to sort of maneuver it so the wire is out of the way and get it on there. Now I've had problems with these before getting them on, but we shall try. I might need to get pliers on it. Oh no, she's gone. Beautiful. Right, so that is the pads changed. Now you give me a moment and I'll go and pump the brakes up and you'll see it all compress up. Let me pop our little caps back in. And that is it. Done. So we'll have to do a bedding procedure on these and uh, the should be instructions with your pads to whatever the, bre the bedding is. They're different for different manufacturers. And I'm hoping you can see there's the pins we cleaned up. You can see most of the grease has been wiped off them anyway. But yeah, that's it. Job, job. Oh, if you do get any greasy fingers on this, obviously, give it a good clean off. We don't want greasy brakes. Oh, ignore that last statement. We forgot to put the clip on. <laughs> anyway, this can be a bit fiddly. So you've got to try and get them in that hole and then get them over this side of that. Uh, and I think it just is a job of fiddling. Um, oh, someone wants to talk to me. Someone wants to talk to me a lot. That. Why can't I get that in? So it's got to go around the front of that lug and try not to take your hands off. That's that one. Oh, that one's gone. So you can see what we've done there. Need a little tapper. Just get that one in. And that holds up all in together. Lovely. Now we're done. So that's it, pretty much done. All we've got to do is put the wheel on, get it off the axle stands, and then torque the bolts up. Uh, I can't remember what the torque is for them. I'll have to just look it up on Google. It is just look up Golf 4 wheel, tor uh, wheel bolt torques and it'll be there. Anyway, the old pads. Now you can see on that one, that is the one with the sensor. Can you see if I've got the light there? You can see it's actually broken into the the wires there. So, but there seems to be a lot of material left on that. This seems quite, well, it's not that thick, is it? The outside one was pretty thick. 
So I'm trying to show you with some light, but I'm failing miserably. Let's see if we can get that to stand up there. Ooh. So yeah, so yeah, seems a lot on the outside. I'm guessing now, yeah, they're pretty worn. The other side was even more worn. This is the driver's side, or the right hand side. So that was a lot more worn. So they were due for it. So yeah, good job jobbed. And this is the little wind back tool, the caliper wind back tool that I got, or kit, that I got from eBay. It's only a cheap kit. It doesn't need to be anything special, does it? So this works. Right, that's it all done. I haven't talked them up yet because I haven't looked on the internet for the talk figure yet. But hey, all done. All I've got to do is talk them up, then go for a test drive, do the bedding in procedure as per the instructions. I haven't read that bit yet, so yeah, we'll get there. Anyway, I hope with this was of some use to you, or you know, if you don't, if you've never done it before, it gives you an idea of what you need, what tools you need. I mean, nothing special. Got a seven mil Allen key, some screwdrivers, a wind back kit if you got it. If not, a, a G clamp or something to pull it in. Nice big screwdriver, and obviously jack and axle stands to they're hidden me on there to support it while you're working underneath it, um, and a torque wrench to torque them up with. But yeah, that's it. Enough waffling. I think we've done enough now, don't you? I wanted to try and keep this uh, short, but. I know what I waffle like, I do apologise. Anyway, like I said, if it was any use to you, please give us a thumbs up. Look us up on Instagram, Larks underscore workshop, where we post pictures of stuff we do. Really, that's about it. Anyway, that's it. Take care, hope to see you next time. Cheers then. All right, let's try that again. That didn't work at all. That failed?